So when I get up to the town, the center of the war, which is the town of Gulu, security wouldn't let me live in the camps. I wanted to live in the camps with two million people were in these IDP camps. And they said, no, you'll be a security risk. So they let me live in the little town and I got a little rent house. And I said, where are you going to begin except prayer? The darkness was so thick. You could cut it with a knife. This guy's doing human sacrifices every day, chopping people to pieces, cutting out eyes and lips and so forth. When the UN discovered it later, they said it was the worst atrocity they'd seen since Hitler. I didn't know it was, it was not known by the rest of the world. So I just moved up there, put a little cardboard sign on my front house, and, and, and an African couple moved in with me. So that's my first family. And on that sign... Uh, out on the front, I said, house of prayer. Everybody welcome, 7A, 7P, seven days a week. We're going to pray. And so, um, and that was the only desire I had was to go up there and pray. I had no agenda. I had no program. I thought, what else can you do during a war? So people flooded into that little house. And we had three-hour prayer meetings in the morning, three hours in the evening, seven days a week. And this went on for seven, eight months just crying out in anguish uh, over the desolation of the land. And it was really Second Chronicles 7.14. But I, I told the, the prayer group, we've got to meet in the stadium, which is nothing more than a grass field. So I went to the government and I said, we have to have a national prayer gathering. And they said, you can't. It's a burial ground and you could do rituals, but you can't pray. And I went back to the prayer team and I said, we have to pray there. So um, we went into a 40-day fast. Now, mind you, that wasn't as hard as, as it is to fast in America because all we were living on is potatoes and water. And so um, we started fasting for 40 days, um, seeking God. We have to have that, that prayer field. And when you pray and fast, which I call it an atomic weapon, it's atomic bomb. God binds the strong man. And when he binds the strong man, he spoils the goods. So we went into this 40 days prayer and I go back to the government and say, we need to rent that field. Oh, you can have it just like that. But that's the power of God at work when he finds his people on their knees. And so when we got permission for the field, uh, I didn't have a penny. But I said, we'll take it, you know, it's going to cost us 200,000 shillings, which is a couple hundred dollars, you know, and uh, equivalent. Then. And, and so I don't know how God provided, but by faith, you know, signs, wonders and miracles follow our faith. So nothing I've ever seen God do. He, he didn't do it because I had a budget for it. You know, he followed. He followed the provision with a step of faith and obedience. And so. We prepared for that national prayer gathering with 40 days of prayer and fasting again. And we mobilized the whole area. Your little fellowship, take a day. Your fellowship, take a day. Your fellowship. And then cover that day in 24 hours of prayer. That happened for 40 days before we started the national prayer gathering. Then when we started, this is the first one. And I say this because it is so significant to what we're seeing God do historically in changing governments. 20 years later, I've been over there 20 years. We still do national prayer gatherings every year. We rent the biggest stadium and the front page of the newspaper changes a week after these prayer gatherings because God works through his church on their knees. Yes. And so after this first national prayer gathering, Joseph Coney, this demonic dictator, said, what week did y'all pray? He said this through his general who got saved later at our house of prayer. And I told him the week he said, that's the week Joseph Coney said, I lost my power. And he had power at a high level. He's called one of the highest agents answering to Lucifer, slaughtering a nation. And so if God can disarm darkness in one region, what can he do in another and another and another? So when we started this prayer gathering, I got scripture verses about repentance and revival and renewal. And I wrote a passage down for every hour. And I said, now you pray, read the passage, pray for the land. No man no title is going to lead this. No man gets any glory. No denomination. We're not going to pray the news. 
I don't want the opinions of people. We don't want doctors. This is a platform for Jesus Amen. and the word of God because he holds his word above his name. You read the word and let's come into agreement with what God says Amen. is possible yes. when if my people. Amen. So that's exactly what we did. And on the fifth day of this national prayer gathering, the government calls me. Are you those crazy people? He actually called me crazy, crazy lady in those days. Praying in the stadium, I said, yes, but there's about a thousand of us. They came on foot and bicycle through bullets and ambushes to get to that prayer meeting. And I said, about a thousand of us have been on our faces in the dirt, blazing sun, eight, 10, 11 hours a day. And I said, why are you asking? He said, because we can feel a change in the heavenlies. He said, it's like this big black curtain has been pulled back. And he said, the heavens are open. All I could think about is Second Chronicles 6 that says, when the heavens are brass, yes. when the enemy comes like a, a, a plague and a, and, an, uh, and, a, and a, a, you know, a war against you yes. comes in to attack you and there's diseases and plagues and famines and starvation if my people that's the prerequisite for second chronicles 714 well i thought we're candidates but he has conditions yes. get on your knees humble yourself seek my face not just my hands what i can do for you press in to know me turn from your ways and our wicked ways are even our ways of our own selfishness. Mm -hmm. Well, we're working to self-ambition, self-seeking, self-promotion, self-preservation instead of self-denial. He said, repent, turn around. And so if we do that conditional, he will heal 